really inspiring. Our next guest, David actually referenced a few times, is Willie Jones, who played with Dickey on those championship teams in the early 60s and still holds many of the school's scoring records. And his number is retired um, in the rafters um, of Bender Arena because he was such a great player and, um, and a great ambassador for American University Athletics. Um, he, too, is a member of the Hall of Fame. And, um, and um, so just one of the great players and a great friend of Dickie Wells and um, a great friend of American University. I'd love to have um, Willie Jones come up here and say a few words about, about Dickie. Good evening. It's uh, a lot of stories about me. <laughs> Most of them are false. Uh, one is true. 56 years ago, as a little guy, I was a great player. Greater than some, but I had a great friend. I was so close, and I'm so happy. I don't think anybody else in this room is as happy as I am. <clears throat> to have my friend, who was so close to me, he was like my skin. If I stepped out, he would step in. Dick and I shared so many things through all of the things that Coach Carrasco dealt with, with the segregation and integration of the schools and how we were supposed to act, how we were supposed to be able to do things that would make other people follow, how to be respectful and grow. And this is what we did. Dick's contribution to this university is a little greater than mine because he also trained kids and coached kids to come here to set a standard. And Wilbur Thomas was also an All-American that he sent here. And another one named Brown that he sent here. Dick was a very, very, very hard discipline. He should be the president of the university if he lived because he graduated with 335 hours. <laughs> he changed his major seven times almost <laughs> before he graduated from American University. So many stories and so many memories. I'd like to thank everybody who remotely had anything to do with Dick Ellington. I call him, that's his middle name, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I also am especially proud he's going in with another great person in Gary Williams, who I also have a close tie to. Assistant coach at the University of Maryland, Joe Harrington, and I used to pick Gary up when he lived in New Jersey to take him to recruit with us. And Gary now, we are so glad and so proud of all the things he's done and has started here at the university. A story about him, because most of you do not know about Fort Mayo, where we used to play. They promised the gym when I came, and I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> and Dick and I went to uh, a game at Fort Myer. Just happened to be playing our arch rival, Georgetown, of course. And Gary was so upset, he jumped up. Dick and I were sitting there, and a pocket full of money hit the court. Dickie tackled me, because I was going to get it. <laughs> Gary's money came out of the floor. Uh, I'm thinking economics. <laughs> they thinking, they thinking winning and losing. It is especially, especially happy when you can have something so proud to put into a case and a memory of a young man who dedicated so much to me, so many memories to me and to be my friend. I appreciate you sitting and listening to the eloquent way that my coach's son, who was just a little boy, DL, who I couldn't get rid of. He was stuck to my leg. I, I couldn't get rid of him. He had a dog named Bullet, a German Shepherd. I couldn't get rid of either one of them. The entire time I was here, they was passing the ball to me, chasing the ball. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And to show you how things evolved, they left and went to El Paso, Texas, where Coach started one of the greatest uh, um, job course centers in the world. And his wife, being bored, Marge, became a painter. Marge, when she went down, nothing to do, started to paint. And she painted this mural. If any of you are familiar with El Paso, the bridge that go across from wherever it is, the Mexican stuff, you know, is named after Carrasco. 
The Job Center is named after Carrasco. The name of Carrasco has gone to a height, and she painted this picture because she knew I loved Coke so much, of a sombrero. The picture now is worth seventy-five to dollars $100,000, and they asked me to donate it to the job called No Chance. <laughs> no Chance. That's my last bit of money. <laughs> Coach with a sombrero. Thank you all so very much for being here today to introduce my son. I'd like to, and hopefully, introduce his brother, who was ahead of us, who's also in the Hall of Fame at A&T as a basketball player. But he was so far ahead of us, we were afraid of him. And Ed Wells is still here to represent him and the family, and I'm sure that he will speak on those that's in the family eloquently. And thank you all so very, very much for being here. Ed, I think I'm the, they told us this would be difficult, but I'm supposed to introduce you so you may step. This is Dick's brother, Ed Wells.